Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes episode. This is a question and answer episode. So um, without further ado, because I can get rambly, uh, let's just jump right into them. Linus uh, writes, um, question, seeing as you tend to focus a lot on realism and accurate depictions when creating your terrain, which is in general a good thing, do you ever feel that you have to sacrifice personal artistic vision in order to reach certain results or levels of realism? If so, how do you reconcile this to achieve an artistic balance? That's an interesting question. Um, generally, I don't feel that I am outside of my artistic vision when I work on pieces. Um, you know, I feel like I like to focus on what I'm working on so it's not about um, what I would like to do you know like freehand drawings on you know buildings or graffiti or you know something outside of what I'm currently doing um, whatever piece I'm working on you know that's what I impart my vision on um, and some pieces give me more freedom than others um, the cliff project that I'm working on you know has a much more wide open environment for me to work with so um, that gives me a little chance to kind of dabble in some areas but sometimes I like having a slightly more restricted focus because it's easy to uh, drift too far away and start getting into areas that add unnecessary time or don't necessarily improve the piece or um, are just distracting so uh, no I, I feel like um, everything I work on meets my needs as an artist um, Question two, when working with plaster or resin casts, uh, what do you use or recommend using as a final varnish on the pieces once they have been painted? Hmm. Uh, plaster is tricky because it's so chip prone. There aren't a lot of things you can put on it that are going to really improve its durability. You might try, I've never done this, you might try giving the plaster a soak of well, I actually had a recommendation before I give you my suggestion. I had a recommendation from somebody that they uh, prime their uh, Her Starts buildings with a mixture of PVA paint and water. So they make a very thin consistency, paint that over it, and that will soak in all the cracks and crevices as well as the surface of the uh, blocks themselves. And he said that that gives vast improvement on the durability. So that's something I'm planning on trying next time I have something like that. Um, the other thought I just had, I don't know, just now, is to um, wash the, uh, the structure of the blocks before you paint them with a varnish, like a gloss varnish, you know, like a urethane varnish. Let that soak in and harden. Um, that's going to give you a, well, it might obscure some detail. I would do a thin coat. And then maybe even cut it with a little mineral spirits so you get a little bit of a thinner consistency. Um, I've done that with some uh, wood when I was refinishing the porch floor. And it w bleeds into the wood fibers really, really well and gives you a strong adhesion. So um, you might try that to... Um, open, you know, to, to get into the pores of the plaster and give you a better bond. Actually, I, I might try that if the uh, glue and water mixture doesn't give me the results I'm looking for. Uh, let's see. Gerard uh, writes, um, Unfortunately, you lost one of my questions, but no worries, these things happen. Actually, I thought I lost these as well, because uh, as soon as I pulled the computer over, it just shut down. I don't know why. Luckily, I saved it. And then I thought I could get these questions out of the trash as well. So I'm trying a new system to prevent losing... Uh, uh, questions in the future. So, uh, my question was about acrylic paints, uh, more specifically Liquitex Basics, which I actually do use, Liquitex Basics, and how to mix them. I've gotten myself a pretty nice mixture down for a base color at the bottom of a river. However, due to the thickness of the paint, I find it very difficult to get the same color each and every time I mix up my colors. Do you have a tip on how to mix acrylic paints to get a consistent result every time? And then he said, uh, I've recently gotten myself a digital kitchen scale that will measure per gram, so I'm going to try experimenting with that, but any help is still appreciated. I sus... Well, it depends on the volume of paint you're mixing. I suspect a gram scale isn't going to be accurate enough. 
Um, you have to figure that a gram scale, if that's the smallest measurement it's making, um, is going to be you know plus or minus a gram. My postal scale that I use is in the tenth of a gram or a tenth of an ounce. Um, so I assume that's a plus or minus you know one or two uh, tenths of an ounce. Um, although it does seem pretty accurate. But for instance, I was trying to mix. Um, oh dear. Uh, I want to say that clear casting resin, no, 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 I'm sorry, it was one of the urethane rubbers, and in order, I was trying a kick it accelerant, smooth on, without getting into this too much, smooth on sells an accelerant for the urethane rubbers, and you have to mix it, say, 1% by weight of the other uh, parts. Now, if I'm mixing 50 grams of, you know, rubber, and then I need... Um, a tenth would be five, um, one percent would be um, half of a gram. So that's a pretty small amount to measure, and my postal scale really doesn't handle that kind of increment, you know, that's that level of, um, God, what the heck was it called in uh, science? Doesn't go to that many significant places? Flashback. Ah. Um, in any case, uh, so you might want to get a better scale if you're going to do it that way. I do not do it that way. I mix it by eye. So whenever I take the cap off and I'm running low and I need to mix them up, um, I take my finger, swipe it on a piece of paper or uh, my palette, um, and then I mix into the bottle until my next swipe matches that. I usually put the recipe on the bottle, you know, um, say two parts, whatever, Cadian Green, one part, Liquitex Blue, one part, you know, whatever building gray and um, I don't have that as a color mix but you get the idea and then I try to measure those accurately and then mix them and then keep doing it until I you know uh, get the matching color but it does require an eye for color you know I feel like at this point I can look at the color and be like mm, that needs a little more green or you know that's off by a shade of uh, dirty brown or you know and I can compensate for that um, but, you know, that may not work for everybody. But as for mixing them, I uh, picked up um, Badger's um, Airbrush Mixer. And with the thought that it'd be great to mix up paints, you know, um, in the bottle. And actually, the uh, tip here is uh, too big to fit in most dropper bottles. I don't know. I actually don't have any Badger paints, so maybe they fit in those just fine. Uh, but it doesn't fit in my Vallejo bottles. It doesn't fit in my uh, bottles that I just bought. Um, doesn't, you know, it doesn't fit. So, but what do I use it for? I use it to mix other kinds of paints. Um, so I'll mix them up in a... Uh, 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 uh. So, you know, this is my building gray bottle. This is my base coat that I um, uh, use for um, most of my stonework. And so what I'll do is I'll just throw in my, my mixes that I think is going to be close. And then I give it a little, whoop, you know, mix it up, pull it out, check the color. No, it needs a little bit more. Drop, drop, drop. And the nice thing about this is you can pull way, way from the bottom of the bottle all the way up. And you're going to get a really good, thorough mixing of it. So you know that the color is coming true. The trick with this, though, is it will spray paint everywhere. You know, when you dip it in deep and you pull it out, you know, paint goes everywhere. So it doesn't make that noise, though. It just sprays. Um, so what I do is I normally make a little sleeve of a paper towel, and then I hold that in the bottle, on the bottle, and then I can come up and I can prevent all that paint from spraying. The first time I did it, you know, I had paint all over me. It was all over the workbench and everything. Anyway, uh, Badger Airbrush. Uh, paint mixer. This is uh, runs off of two double A's. Um, I want to say it, it's dirt cheap. I forget. I bought it so long ago. I, I want to say it's under $10. I mean, it's really inexpensive. And it's a great tool to have for mixing paints in general. Um, so, either a better scale or um, you got to do it by eye. Uh, that's it. You know, I mean, you could if you had... Um, Sometimes, but it's not going to work for Liquitex paints because they're too thick. Um, I have a whole box of, it helps when I'm talking away from the camera. I have a whole box of pipettes. Um, these are cheap disposable pipettes. They're really inexpensive. You buy like a box of 100 for 6 bucks or something like that. And they have uh, milliliter markings on them, up to 3 milliliters. For thin mixes, especially in a small, uh, you know, 
volume, uh, this is perfect because I know I can pull up two milliliters, three milliliters, one milliliter water, mix that up and I know it's right. Um, to use this with like Liquitex paint, which are very thick, you may need to cut that with a little water, which might ultimately affect, you know, the paint quality. So anyway, it's just another idea, plenty of other ways probably to do it. Um, Colin writes, hope this finds you and your household well. Uh, miniature market, which always has a respectable clearance section, has recently added a bunch of scenery supplies and related materials to clearance. Uh, now, of course, this is uh, sent to me on August 29th. Yeah, so, um, you know, they, they might not be on clearance. I'll talk about it in a second. Um, I've never tried any of Sequel Web weapon brand business but there are some interesting things and the prices are certainly fair and he sends me a link to it um, if you go to miniature market and uh, use their search bar for secret weapon you'll find them just fine also they have crushed glass as snow does that work i have bags of chunky broken polished glass in a few colors bought from the craft store for future use as an elemental wall spell effect. Oh, that's nice. Uh, ice fields or lava details, etc. But I have never considered full-on powdered glass for similar effects. Yikes. Um, I have seen their powdered glass offered. I've never seen it in person. I have been wanting to try it, but it's it's kind of pricey. I mean, it's not, especially if you're doing bases, you know, uh, you're gonna do a, a handful of miniatures but, you know, for doing large, you know, like a modular board set, I, you know, I'm not going to buy a $6 bottle this big for it. So I have not tried it out, um, but I think it probably gives an awesome effect. And in fact, they sell a liquid, like a water effect uh, uh, solution with it that you can mix in to get like slushy effects, that sort of idea. Uh, so um, I would say give it a go unless you need a large area that you want to cover. Uh, but, uh, you know... I recently, people are going to say, powdered glass, you know, it's so dangerous, or something like that. I recently saw on Snopes.com, I don't know how I found this, um, there was a myth that you could um, kill somebody by mixing powdered glass into their food, right? And the idea being that they ingest that and rip their innards to shreds. And um, they were explaining, and I thought very legitimately, that if you are eating glass, this relates here in a second, if you're eating glass, you're going to notice you're eating glass. And if it's ground so fine that you don't notice you're eating it, it's not going to cause you any harm. Um, and I think that in this instance, we're looking at the very same thing. I think powder glass is going to be pretty innocuous to use. Um, it's not going to, you know, braid your hands. Um, and it's heavy enough that it's probably not going to be an airborne particle very easily. But you may want to wear a dust mask with it. Um, but I think of it as, you know, glass is mostly silica. And I work with a lot of sand, a lot of fine sand, and it definitely goes in the air. I'm not too worried about breathing it. I mean, I don't want to, you know, sit in a cloud of sand dust all day because you can get silicosis, which is a damage to your lungs. But, um, you know, the dose makes the poison. I mean, very infrequent small exposures are not harmful. So um, I'd say go for it and not worry about it. Uh, and um, send me a link with a picture. See how it comes out. I would like to try that, um, and actually, um, I've been thinking about getting some myself, so anyway, um, last comment, I went to the Secret Weapon uh, site, uh, well, the Miniature Market site, took a look at their Secret Weapon brand offerings, and they have some interesting things available. Um, I might pick up, they have some um, runes in Brass Etch, they do a lot of Brass Etch work, well, not a lot, but some. Um, they have all sorts of... Um, Gothic lettering in Brass Edge, their razor wire, which I think is the best razor wire on the market. Uh, it's the only razor wire I'll use in the future. Uh, and they also have um, lots of basing materials, fallen leaves and uh, other kinds of things, which look really nice. Um, the prices seem pretty reasonable at first glance. Now looking at the miniature weapon, uh, miniature weapon, I have too many things in my head. The miniature market prices, they are on sale. <laughs> but they don't say clearance. So the clearance might have ended, you know, it's up to you to go take a look and judge the value for yourself. Um, but I think their um, leaves are particularly nice. They're basically birch seed pods. Um, so when birch uh, trees flower and only a certain species of birch tree, it's not like every birch, um, they form a, um, what's it called? Oh God. No, I can't remember. It'll come to me later. It's like a, 
It's like an upside down cattail. It's not a cattail. There's a name for that, that flower mechanism. Anyway, um, and that is comprised of lots of little seeds all packed in together. Those seeds are what people use, and then they tint them to make leaves. Um, they're three-lobed, and they're very nice to scale, and they're perfect for doing small dioramas and uh, things like that. Um, so I think it's definitely worth taking a look, and um, I've bought many things from Miniature market and uh, they do have good prices and a pretty good selection so uh, take a look at their stuff pick up some uh, crushed uh, glass and uh, let me know how things work out um, I might go and buy some of their um, brass etched runes maybe to add to the cliff project I've been thinking mm -hmm. so um, maybe I should put that order in today uh, let's see last question for today Harley writes I've been enjoying your videos but a question since he seems to have the run of the shop, how do you keep your cinematographer, that is to say, George, from getting his furry nose into some of the substances you work with that would be hazardous for him, such as whatever you use for water, the flock, the static grass, to name a few? Well, um, he does get into stuff sometimes. Um, he's pretty good about avoiding things like wet paint, but uh, he has run through my spray area and gotten paint on his feet. Um, he's gotten paint on his butt. Um, and he and his sister, Sadie, who never shows up in any of these videos, have a real strong desire to drink from my paint cups, uh, my water that I wash out. So that led us, my wife and I, to um, put a water station... <sighs> A water station on the workbench so he has a dedicated water bowl here and uh, he loves that and that's his primary uh, drink area when he comes downstairs so he's been out of the paint cups for a while other than that I don't worry too much about him um, things like flock and static grass aren't gonna really bother him uh, but he wants to investigate things from time to time so mm, I try to discourage him from heading into things like resins. And of course, if I like pour a pond or rivers and I have Envirotech that's setting up and that could take, you know, eight hours to set, I cover it. Although I used to cover it, then he'd step on the cover, then the cover would bend in, then it would smash into stuff. Um, once I had um, urethane uh, rubber curing on the floor, because I didn't have enough space in the workbench, so I put a big shelf on the floor, he stepped in that. And uh, then he tracked little urethane kitty prints all over the basement um, until he got most of that off. So, uh, eh, it's not easy being a cat down here. Not easy being a cat owner. But in general, he's all right, and uh, he doesn't get into too much trouble. Um, Shaddy hasn't been in any videos lately. And the other day, he was in the house where I was shooting a video, and I was like, here's your chats. But I'm not going to just pick him up and put him in, you know. It's about him being comfortable with being on camera, so. In any case, um, that's it for today. I have a few more questions in the uh, inbox, so to speak, um, but I try to keep it maybe um, to four or less or five maybe for each episode. Um, it is a little hot down here. If you uh, are interested in submitting a question to the question and answer section, you can submit that by mailing it to terrenscapes at gmail.com. Put Q&A in the subject line. I'll add it to the queue and um, sort of going on a first in, first out basis. And as they accumulate, I got I had so many in there, I was like, oh my gosh, i got to shoot a video. So uh, as they pile up, um, I'll chip away at them uh, when the timing is right, particularly if I'm shooting some videos and I already have the camera and the lights out. It's a good time to add one. So, thank you for joining me for another question and answer uh, episode. I hope you found something here that was useful to you. And if you're a new subscriber to my channel, I just want to say thank you and welcome to the channel. I would say welcome to the uh, crazy terrain train. I don't know where it's going, but I appreciate the uh, people who are continually um, joining the uh, channel. It's uh, very flattering, and um, hopefully I can offer you something that you'll find useful in your own hobbying. Um, and... Uh, I think, uh, you know, if you hopefully I offer enough diversity that you'll find something that appeals to you amongst the channel. So uh, thank you once again. Um, I'll probably be a little bit before I shoot the next video. Hopefully the next video will be another update on the Cliff Project because um, right after I close this camera lens, that's what I'm starting on. So I'll talk to you later.